This video is going to showcase the four different types of components within Tecla structures, whether working with custom components or system components created by Tecla. All right, the first component type that we're going to work with is a detail. And so let's go ahead and apply a base plate to the column. If I type in 1047 here, it shows us US base plate component. If I click to activate the component, you'll see here that it says pick the part. So we'll pick the column. Then it says pick a position along that part to place the detail. Now, base plates uh, are basically end details, which means that we're primarily picking it either at the bottom end or the top end or the left or the right end. So here we're just going to go ahead and pick the bottom of the column. But if I go ahead and pick that column again and then pick the top, you'll see that it automatically reverses that and orientates it the other direction for the other side of the column. Now, you can even apply this same detail even to a beam. So again, this is specifically an end detail type. So it knows which end you're picking on, and it knows to automatically orientate or rotate that detail based on the end that you're picking. Other good examples of end details are, for instance, here an embed plate. So this cast in plate 1069. If you pick on the beam, then you pick the end, you'll see that it actually puts the embed in here. And if I zoom in, you'll see that the embed plate and the shear connection is orientated correctly to match the correct side of the end of the beam. Another good example here is actually doing the joist seat uh, for going into concrete walls. So there's a joist bearing plate 1067, and this works the same way. You pick on the beam member, which would oftentimes be a joist here, and then you'll see that it orientates the component and puts in the embed plate and does the cuts on the end of the beam or the joist. So those were end details. Now let's go ahead and do intermediate details. A good example of this is doing a stiffener along a beam or a column. So here we have 1003. If I go ahead and pick on this beam and then I right click to say snap to nearest, I can pick anywhere along this beam. So let's say that I pick here and then I'm going to pick also on the right hand side of the beam. Now when you look at this, you'll see that this is an intermediate detail. So it doesn't matter which end of the beam or where along the beam that I pick, it's basically going to orientate this the same way along the length of that member. So again, this is really great if you're doing stiffeners or web penetrations and things like that, where you're just picking one part and then you're picking a position anywhere along there to apply that specific detail. Let's move on to the second component type, which is called connections. Let's go ahead and type in 186 here as an example, which is going to bring up the column with stiffeners. If we activate this component, you'll see at the lower left hand corner it says pick the main part, then it says pick the secondary part. So here when we pick two different pieces in the model, it applies a connection between them. If the size of this particular member changes, it basically sends a flag to that component to modify and automatically update based on those framing changes. So the way connections work is that you're always picking at least one primary and one secondary and you're connecting those two pieces together. Whereas a detail was picking one part and picking a point to insert that component along the length or at the end of those parts. Now connections don't have to just be uh, one primary and one secondary. They can actually have more than one secondary. So if we come in here to connection number 143, which is a double sided clip angle connection, we're going to pick the primary, which is the supporting member. We'll pick the first secondary, the second secondary, and then we'll middle mouse button here, and it applies a shared clip angle connection with shared bolts between the first and the second pick secondary. So you can either pick one primary and one secondary, or you can pick a primary and more than one secondary, depending on the connection type. The next type of component is a seam. And this is generally a combination of both a detail and a connection. Now the way that's going to work is if we go ahead and type in roof here, we'll see that there's some roof frame components. And there's one here that's called roof frame seam. I'm going to activate this component and it says to pick the main part, then pick a secondary. And then it prompts me to actually pick location points here. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the first point and then I'll go perpendicular for the second point and it locates and orientates my frame. Now what's great about this is that if I change this beam size here, let's say to a W14 by 74, 
you'll see that the cuts and everything on this update. So I can do intelligent things that are parametric to the input parts, but then what's also great is because I can pick these positions, I can actually control the location and the orientation of these particular parts. So here you can see that the frame can actually be rotated or positioned differently. So again, this takes advantage of the different input features of both a detail as well as a connection. The fourth and final component type is part. So here's some examples of that. Let's type in ladder and we'll activate S35 here. I'm gonna say control left click and I'm gonna first start my ladder and pick the top point, which would be 20 foot. And then I'll do the bottom point here. And now it places that ladder. So the whole idea here is that I'm actually picking one or two points in the model. And then basically what it's doing is it's adding fresh parts completely into the model. So like as if this is a standalone new assembly that's being created. There is no primary or secondary that's being picked like I did with details, connections, and seams. This is basically a new set of parts or objects that are being completely created from scratch by me just picking location points. Ship's ladder is another good example. Let's say that I pick here and then I say control left click and I'll pick an elevation or a height. And here it completely adds in all of these steel parts as one new unit that is created. There are no input parts that are being picked. Another good example might be a truss or for instance here there's a joist component. So here if I say joist bar, if I just pick point 0.1 and point 0.2, it's going to then go ahead and calculate those cords as well as do all of the web members and everything in here and place in a joist. Now based on the two picking points, this might determine the length of it as well as the orientation of this specific component and all the parts that are created. So again, this is parametric in the sense that if I moved any of these input points, so if I just hold down Alt to grab that endpoint, and then I just say move from there, and then I stretch it to a different location, then you'll see that that actually updates, and you'll see all of the spacing, and then the cords also update with that. So that's a component part. All right, so to do a quick recap of the four different types of components, let's first start with the detail. There are two different types of details. There's an end detail, which is basically applied and automatically rotated based on the end of the beam or part that you're attaching to. Then there's an intermediate detail that applies parts by picking one main part and picking a point anywhere along that member. The second type is a connection. A connection involves at least one primary and one secondary, but it can involve multiple secondaries, such as the case as this clip angle connection number 143, where we picked a primary and two secondaries. So here again, a connection is connecting at least two parts together. The third type is a seam. Here in this example with the roof frame, we picked a primary, we picked a secondary, and we also picked two input points here to define the direction as well as potentially the length of this roof frame or this seam. Then the fourth type is a custom part. And a good example of that is a ladder, a ship's ladder or a stair or joist or truss. Basically what we're doing is we're just picking input points, either one or two input points, and it's creating new objects here in the model. There is no primary or secondaries to pick and place to.